And there we go. Welcome back to the next episode of Friday Night Counter Attack. We're in episode five now. I think we are actually. How's everyone doing? You okay? Back again. Feeling good, man. Feeling great. Can't complain at all. In a very good mood today. Not gonna lie. Very, very good mood. It's a good time of recording as well. We're on week three of lockdown and the government's just stated that we're going to get some fans back to the football stadium. So that'll be a nice little refreshing sight to see in the UK. How's everyone been this week? Football's back, lad. I'll see you at uh, Gold in the next few weeks. Got the pitch booked as well. Hopefully, it'll be fun. Yeah, it was good. Team now. Oh, good. Man United got a good result over the weekend. Um, I know that game on Saturday at three o'clock. Um, I mean, do you know anything about it? Me? No, Sal. Sal. Sal? What, what happened, oh. sorry? That game on Saturday that happened at 3 o'clock. <laughs> Saturday, 3 o'clock. Oh, yeah, we got robbed. I know. I'll, oh. I'll put it out there. What was the result? How many points did we get? I can't was remember. It, was it zero points? Yep. But we're still above you in the table. Oh, what, what, what happened to winning the league? I'm sure at the start of the season, but we can, we can find that somewhere got, in the archives. We've got more, po- we've got more points. We've got more points at this stage than Leicester did at this stage when they won the title. Okay, Sal, I've got one question for you. Are, you. are you winning the league, yes or no? That's, I mean, it's... Yeah, he's it's live on record. record. He's, he's being recorded, he's isn't under it? pressure. No, it's live we've got a on record. We've got a chance to win it. Unbelievable. It's too early to say. He said yes or no. Okay, well, no, but look, let's move on from that. Let's talk about Arif and his half and half scarf on the weekend. <laughs> the heart was saying West Brom, it's the mind is saying United. And I guess, look, as a true glory Sorry. fan, he won the top of the team that won. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing half and half about me. I'm just straight, you Man United, straight in the blood, in the veins, in the mind, in the heart. There's no half and half about me. That's all I knew growing up. I only knew Man United, didn't know anything else. I didn't even know football existed. All I knew is Man United existed. <laughs> he would have said that if they lost. Before I knew football existed, Man United, I knew Man United existed. That, that's, the, that's the extent of me. There ain't no half and half yet. Oh, we're going to have some fun. This first episode of all six of us. I'm loving it so far. You know, I can feel the energy, man. It feels good today. Even though Saf was about half an hour late, but it's okay. Yeah, because on the flip side as well, you have you had what Jurgen Klopp the last season or two playing as reserves in the FA Cup and in the League Cup because he didn't value it because <laughs> he was going for the Champions League and he's going for the title uh, in England as well. So even though people are like, oh, it's disrespectful to play the kids in the Cup against the Saturday Never, he still won some of the games, but he lost the... Uh, Aston Villa in that League Cup game. But it just goes to show that he prioritised the best way possible. Ole's playing Pogba against Rochdale and yeah. he gets injured for the most of the winter, which makes no sense to me. He plays like he's injured anyway, so we're all right. I mean, I think, I think that's a bit harsh on Pogba. Yeah, that, that's true. I think, honest, I think that's harsh. Pogba's world class. You can't deny it. There no, it is. Disagree, mate. Disagree. No, I'm being honest. That, you can't deny it. That wasn't there, like, any you know, brains in the manager to say, he's just come back from a serious injury. Let's bring him on slowly and let him adapt rather than put him on for 90 minutes against Rochdale. Ooh, Vish, mm. any brains from the manager? You're a Man yeah. United fan. How do you feel about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer then? Do you reckon he'll be playing all of his players? in the Well, basketball? the thing is, mate, when you're manager of Manchester United, you've got to win every game. Um, but you, you know that's true. And yeah, but it's changed now. You've not, you've not really won anything like that. All right, so like, so you that's that's just, can you stay out of it, please? That, that, no, that I'm that just being honest. We, like, that no, but I think thing. that half the problem is that your expectations is too high. Because it's, it's a cycle, and I'll tell you how it's been from every manager's cycle. The manager comes in, he gets us top four, he doesn't get backed. The season after we finish out of the top four, they sack him. That happened with Van Gaal, that happened with Jose Mourinho, and that's going to happen with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You'll see it. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm proven wrong. I really hope I'm proven wrong. But let's be honest, none of us can see United going on and winning the title. Yeah, it's not going to be. It's not going to be a title or top four season for you this year. Oh well, well, you'll find out this season when you don't get top four. Then you will come back to this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, not saying, I'm, I'm not saying top four is guaranteed, but you can't write us off from top four completely. No, it's I'm very, not. I'm <laughs> saying. I'm saying that we we probably got more chance of top four than you lot. Oh no, thanks. <laughs> okay. You didn't want to talk about Saturday, man. What nine minutes before Salim has to leave? So we'll do the five aside uh, Premier League because the Premier League is back again. Then we're doing what under twenty threes this week. So yeah. Go, go, go. yeah, that's fine then. So I've gone for Dean Henderson in net for his performances last season, and then I've got um, saying Maximan on one side and Foden on the other. 
and then Havertz up, up top, like anyone that really stood out. So I thought Havertz probably do the job for me up top. For me, I need those one striker I'd, I'd go for. So Mason Greenwood. I'm pretty sure one or two of us will have Mason Greenwood in their team going forward. But left foot, right foot, doesn't matter what foot. Raheel 2020 from last week. <laughs> I think it was more Raheel 2019 that. It was last week. I remember. I don't know when. Oh started. no, he's been saying it. He's been saying it for years that left foot, right foot. Whatever. Doesn't matter what. He was going to get it printed on his top or something. <laughs> Even if it's a bit childish, but. No, not all of us has. Not all of us can have two foot strikers in the Premier League. But yeah, it's all right. I mean, all our strikers have got two feet, so I'm not sure about you. Uh, should we? Um, the back I also went for Fikayo Tomori. I think brilliant player we've seen from last season from Chelsea. Um, obviously, he's not getting much game time, but I feel like he deserves it. He had a good season last season. He's good coming out with the ball as well as staying back and obviously defending. And there's one that you're all sleeping on, and that's Marcus Rashford, 22 years of age. I wasn't sleeping on him. I knew he Prime was Minister, MBE, Dr. Marcus Rashford. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised he wasn't mentioned so far, but he has to be the best player that's under 23 in the Premier League, and that's a fact. Then you could just say that Calvert-Lewin's probably a better out and out striker than him. I don't know. Mm. No, but probably, as a, as a, as a number know. nine, probably, yeah. But Steen Henderson, Gomez, Phil Foden, Marcus Rashford and Mason Greenwood. That's basically get an England vibe aside as well. You look yeah, at it that way. Trent, Alexander-Arnold, I'm surprised he's not in anyone's team, but in a five-side team, I think he'll absolutely tear it apart. I, would, um, I don't think so. I think so. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Side, with him, you wouldn't see well, him. There's the no college. crossing. Yeah, the reason why I picked Tamori is because he can go up and down. I think Trent, if he's one-on-one, with like the likes of, let's just say, like Rashford or a Grealish or someone like that, he, he, they're going past him too easily. He's too easily beaten to be that way. Prime Minister, MB, Dr. Marcus Rashford. It has to be done. So Boris to name Johnson, my oh, five... Oh, I thought you said Prime Minister. No, I mean, there's only one Prime Minister that I know, and that's uh, Marcus Rashford, mate. Well, there was a... I had, a, I had a three. Gomez, Trent, or Tomori. <laughs> Tomori, yeah? Mm. Um, not Reese James, not I'm, Chelsea. I'm, I'm, not Re- I'm with Tomori. I uh, don't know who Reese James is, man. Sorry. Roughly. Never mind. Carry on. The, Carry on. the thing is, I, I like I like Reese James, but I don't know. I felt like giving Tomori a chance to give me because he's been a bench warmer so far. I feel like giving him a chance. <laughs> you are keeping your fire. Oh god, that kills it, man. You ready on the underground? <laughs> You know, yeah, staff taking the piss on this podcast on 11. There's quite a few names. Uh, I was thinking about putting Pulisic in there as well until Hamza mentioned him, but then I left it. Um, Why not? He's your own player. You support Chelsea. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but I, I, I want, to, I want to follow the. Uh, you know, after thinking about it, I think you know the English talent is is, you know, at the moment unbeatable, unbeatable at the moment. So I went with. Um, as Rohil says, left foot, right foot, any foot, or whatever he says. Um, Maison Greenwood. I went with Maison Greenwood um, because Mason. obviously. Yeah, Maison, Maison, bro. Maison. Maison, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like um, spelling it French. <laughs> <laughs> first, first, Yan Dad, that now Maison. You put your dad on the podcast, Led? <laughs> bro, it's Maison. If you can't say it, yeah, don't say it. Just say Greenwood. <laughs> So I was just going to say, uh, before you end your Sky report, doesn't Portugal play in the Premier League? You what? Doesn't Portugal play in the Premier League? You talking about Wolverhampton Wanderers? Oh my god! <laughs> I thought you I thought your signal was going know. again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one went over your head. <laughs> it did because they shop at Porto, uh, Wolverhampton. They literally shop at Porto. Don't they have like? Don't they have like eight Portuguese players there? You wanted to talk about how Jose Mourinho has got. Tottenham to first place. This wait, week. wait, 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 Hamza, Hamza. Vish, if, you're Vish, Vish. In, if you're gonna introduce that person that you just mentioned, you gotta introduce him properly. His full name, Jose. I hope you listen to this one day. Vish is gonna introduce it. Go on, Vish. You introduce this man we're that gonna, we're talking about. We're gonna talk about Mister Jose Mario de Santos Mourinho Felix, the Tottenham Hotspur manager and where he has taken Tottenham in one year. Um, I just feel that, you know, Tottenham, do I think they're going to win the league? Honestly speaking, I don't. Because, again, this is something we touched on before. They're playing Europa League. So they're playing on a Thursday and then they're playing on a Sunday. 
And I just think, you know, injuries will hit them and they'll lose key players at key moments throughout the season, which will see them drop off. And I still think they're not there yet. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, Mourinho still I needs, disagree. Um, I think Mourinho gets a, a lot of unfair criticism. And I think for this week, he's even got touchline ban um, or stadium ban or something like that for Tottenham's Europa League game because they st- he was late to kick off or something. But he's probably done that on purpose, knowing Jose Mourinho. He's done that on purpose so he can send his number two and prepare for Chelsea on the weekend, which is a proper yeah. Jose. You know what? Which is actually, you know what? That's a fair point. Proper Jose Mourinho thing to do. Yeah. yeah, I disagree. I think Spurs will actually get somewhere this season because of Jose Mourinho. I think that's someone that they've been missing in their manage in their managers for years. Because what 2008 was the last time they won a cup competition, and I'm really passionate about thinking that Tottenham Hotspur will win rather an FA Cup, a League Cup, or a Europa League. They will challenge for the league this season because I think they've got the squad depth to do it. And they've got the Jose Mourinho squad depth to do it because he's chosen the players. And I think uh, Pierre Holberg, one of the signings of the season, I think having a midfield general like him at a club like Tottenham, where you don't have to have all of your wingers tracking back. And you look at when they used to have Ali and Ericsson and Lamella as their midfield free, they're attacking free. Compared to now, when you've got what Son, probably Bergwijn, and then you've got Ndombele, who's back on form as well. Every trophy matters, man. There's no, there's no such thing as a Mickey Mouse trophy. Every when you, when you're, when you want to be a big football club, every single trophy matters. And one of the things that I loved about Jose Mourinho the most is his persona. When he was Man United manager, I think, I think a lot of us took it for granted. Jose Mourinho is the maverick. End of story. Yeah. He's someone yeah. that will, yeah. He's, he still has a show wherever he goes. It's not yeah. always about Man United or Tottenham or Chelsea. It's Jose Mourinho and his team. Deli Ali isn't getting into the team anytime soon. He's his probably sunk instead of swam. Serge Aurier, who wasn't in the best of forms, has become an amazing player. He's a player Excellent that you see, against City. You, see him, you see him like you see him on FIFA, basically, just with all of his stats going up. He's fantastic. Serge Regulon was a fantastic sign-in. They have that buyback clause in, in there, so... If he leaves, he leaves. But for the time that is there now, fantastic as the wing back. And you- like you said, every team he's gone to um, has bought into his idea. So, so he's explained it, and they've bought into his idea. So they they trust the process. But and you just think about and- it. Now, let's just say Spurs go on to win the title. How silly are the United players in that United ball going to look? Next level. Where everywhere, everywhere he's gone, he's won. He didn't go to Man United to win the league, but he went to Spurs, who won the same league, and he won the league with them. How silly is that Man United board going to look? Yeah, how, how silly did Man United look against Spurs? How silly did the did fans look on, online? Literally, I, I, in a way, I'm a Man United fan, but in a way, I expected they would beat us, but not, that, but not by that much. Jose was just like, just be ruthless with them. I don't care. He would have loved it if there was a 75,000 capacity stadium. Full. One final question. Who here thinks Spurs will win a trophy? I definitely think they'll win a trophy. This no, season. I think they'll win a trophy. I, say I think they'll win a trophy, trophy because... I think they'll um, win a trophy. I think you can see that mentality season. changing. Mm. I think you can see that mentality changing, and that that is obviously scary. But you can see that you saw it in the documentary. Their mentality. Topic of that. Let's get quick prediction for Sunday's game. Then we got Chelsea and Tottenham at Stamford Bridge. Mourinho goes back to his old stomping ground. What are you reckon, lads? I think I think um, two two. Bear in Chelsea mind both. Chelsea. Bear in mind both are coming off good results on both top of the table, both towards the top of the table. So it's a very very big game. Two Even two. Though early on. Two two. You're going with. I think uh, Ch- Chelsea have got too many snowflakes in there, so I'm going to go with 3-0 Tottenham. I'm, I'm not saying right now. I'm being, I'm being, no, no, it's about being real. You get me? It's about being real. you got to look at what Mourinho you got, you got to back your team. Typical, typical rent boy right here. No, typical. not even, bro. Not even, bro. I'm or, not gonna, I'm or, not, you, or I'm you not got, have you, you thinking about City on the weekend instead of Chelsea? I'm not, I'm not going to sell myself, you know, just to, you know, um, I don't know, get a few credentials here and there, but, you know... Um, oh, and then, because we've got Man United fans on, do you reckon we'll beat Southampton away, who have been flying this season? They've been amazing. I think we're going to beat them. They're playing away from home. Our away form has been brilliant. And I don't understand why. And how it's been better than our home form. But I'm going to go with the 2-1 two, two, Man United win there as well. I'm going 4-0 uh, Man United. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> now, I'll be 1-0 one, one Bruno Fernandes, as you do. Penalty. Yes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have him know the Come on, Fernandez. Just put, just put him as captain as your fantasy football captain. Get the penalty, clean sheet. It's all good. 
Uh, I'm going to go two 0 United. I think um, playing away from home for some reason, you know, we just we, we've we've got that formula ticked. It's just at home. We're just an awful watch. And peace, peace out. Take care. Adios. Man United are the greatest. <laughs>